Hello everyone and welcome back to the Alcove podcast. I'm Senna and I'm Sheena and today uh, we're gonna have uh, Soren as a guest and can you tell us a little bit about him? Yes, he's a president for student government at TUJ and he's an ambassador for the ICAS program as well and he is just very interesting, really well spoken. I'm sure everyone would love listening to him talk. Awesome, can't wait to meet him. Hi everyone! Today I'm here with Mr. President Soren Dixon. Yay! Can you give us three words to describe how you're feeling right now? Right now? Let's see. Um, excited, contemplative, oh. and loquacious. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> it's to speak a lot, to be, you know, long spoken. So I'm feeling very loquacious, like I'm going to talk a lot. Did you say bong spoken? Long spoken. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, that's another word I don't know. Okay. You said, wait, excited? Contem- contemplative and loquacious. Why contemplative? Because I'm thinking a lot. Like, I wonder, like, I'm, I'm curious how this is going to go. I'm, I'm a curious to kind of explain my thoughts, and I have a lot of deep thoughts. So uh, I'm contemplating the meaning of life and whatnot. No, on this Thursday morning. On <laughs> this Thursday morning. How was your morning? It was all right. Um, I, I didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night because I was out late with a friend. But, you know, it was pretty uh, good. Woke up, checked the news, came to school. So. Yeah, but I noticed you have a really good hairstyle today, <laughs> did it? <laughs> Take no, you a while. No, no, it was just luck, actually. It was just like I, I kind of woke up. I'm like, ah, my hair's not very good. I brushed it one. And I'm like, huh, that works. Okay, we're good you to go. You should face the camera and show you this side of the oh. hair. It's so cool. Isn't it cool? He looks like Superman. <laughs> 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 yeah, and I noticed like <laughs> the color of your hair and the beard is a bit different. Yeah. Is it natural? It is natural. Yeah, no, the, the beard, is. it has a lot of different colors. It's, you know, like a little charcuterie yeah, yeah, board. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bit... Blonde, like blonde gold. hints of red, hints yeah. of gold, yeah. So, oh. full on Irish beard. I'm very proud of it. Yeah. Do you, how often do you trim it? Like, uh, okay. Probably once a week, once every other week. So, e- I trimmed it like a, a week ago before I came back. So, I've seen photos of you when you were younger, and you're still young, but from what, like, yeah, from what point did you start growing your beard? I started having a beard when I was like 15. So I was like, because I, I was homeschooled growing up, so yeah. I didn't have to shave my beard. Uh, um, so I'd go to baseball games and everyone else would, you know, be clean shaven for school and be like, why do you have a beard? And I'm like, because I don't have to shave. And they're like, oh my God, but also you have a beard and you're 15. <laughs> so people have been thinking I'm like 25 since mm-hmm. I was 15. So I've just gotten used to the... You're 20? <laughs> You're 19? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, oh yeah, I forget that people don't know this, so, you know, just yeah. roll through it. But Are you 20 now? I'm 21 now, so I turned oh, 21 a little bit off okay, the break. Okay. But yeah. I see, I see. Did your dad have beard? Yeah, my dad has a beard. Very similar. I actually look a lot like my dad. Um, mm-hmm. So people kind of get us confused or think, sometimes even think we're like brothers, which is kind of funny. At this point, he's got gray in his beard, so it's a lot easier to tell that, like, he's an old man. But <laughs> people still think, my dad kind of looks young for his age, and I look a lot older for my age, so we can kind of be in similar age ranges um, in terms of looks. But, yeah, my dad has a beard, too. My brother had a beard for a while. He kind of shaves it or, or keeps it, but, yeah, it's a bearded family. Wait, you have a brother, too? I know you, you said you have two sisters. Two sisters and then an older brother who plays baseball. So we would play baseball together. We'd both have beards at that time, and hey. everyone would kind of go nuts. Hey. And you said you have a musical background. Mm-hmm. So I played classical and then jazz bass in high school, but everyone in my family would play ba- would play um, music. So my eldest sister is a classically trained violinist. She just graduated from Temple Main Campus, actually. Oh. Um, my twin sister plays harp. She's at main campus right now. Twin? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she Wait. doesn't have a beard, but you know, she, so she's not identical. Twin? Yeah. Twin uh... sister. So she's at main campus playing harp. Really good harpist. Um, and then my older brother, he played trumpet. So he played classical and then jazz as well, trumpet. So. Oh, well, then would you like get to wake up to the sound of the harp and stuff? Get to or have to, but yes, I would wake up to the sound of the harp and violin. Uh, isn't that healing, though? Or um, For the first time, but when yeah. it's five hours every day, the healing <laughs> elements kind of quickly go out the window. So. Oh, oh, so they're playing music 24-7. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, they have to practice all the time. So I've heard way more violin than I ever thought I needed to. And I can sing a lot of violin pieces just from memory. 
Um, mm. And, you know, it would, even me and my brother, we would get to know the piece so well because our sister would play it so much. Every time she would make a mistake, we'd just be like, you made a mistake <laughs> just to mess with her <laughs> just because we got so tired of listening. But in, in high school, we'd always, like, be playing video games in the living room. Our sister would be practicing, and we'd just, you know, be playing, you know, Battlefront to classical music. It was quite a combination, but a lot of fun. Battlefront of classical music. Yeah, just like imagine playing like a shooter game and you just have da 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 <laughs> in the background. It's very elegant for, you know, shooting clone troopers and whatnot. So That's like, I don't know, something from a music. Yeah. Right? A music movie, movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like you're going crazy, but the song at the back is like so beautiful. Yeah. Adds that psycho and then element. Me and my brother would get really animated when we, so we'd be like screaming or yelling at each other, and then you know our sister would just keep you know just focusing on her music. It was we, everyone in our household got really used to loud noises and tuning them out. So. Wow! And when did you come to Japan? Like how, till what point were you in the U.S. and? So I first came to Japan in August of 2022. Um, so it's been. About a year and a half, roughly, oh, give or take. Um, okay. Yeah, but before that, I hadn't really left the country. Um, I'd only been in the United States. I'd been to Canada for like a day, but that doesn't really count. Um, Canada. Oh, Canada. Um, so this is my f- was my first time out of the country. Um, I'd studied Japanese for about a year before coming, so I could speak when I got here. But, um, yeah, no, it was my first time coming out of, out of America. It's a very foreign country. Yeah. And um, where do you live in? Did you say you live near school? Yeah, I live in Slunginjaya, right near Carrot Tower. So I'm a 10, 15 minute walk from school. So Is that like the very first place you lived after you no, moved to Japan? No, actually, the first place I lived was Musashi Kosugi. I lived in the dorms there. Oh. Um, I still go back there every weekend um, to kind of visit some friends. But hey. yeah. It's the temple dorm, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Which, I've been there. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a it's a long walk from the station, but it was a good time to reflect when you had to walk twenty minutes every day. <laughs> <laughs> I like that area because the station has a big mall, right? Yeah. But the um, dorm is in a quiet place. Right. You can't really get very secluded, and then kind of we would always call it like walking into town, right? Where you just have to go mm-hmm. in if you want to go. Mm-hmm. You can get you can go to Daiso. You can go to some good you know re- restaurants or cafes, but you had to walk into town. So um, I would kind of go in, I would go get stuff, you know, when I came into school, but I really found kind of stuff in my local area a lot more. I found local restaurants in that secluded place, and that's kind of where I go on the weekends, is go back to those local restaurants um, to talk to, you know, friends that I made. Oh, well, I've been there before. How do you find local restaurants that you just walk around? Because it's a big area, yeah. and I didn't really get to find a lot of... So for me, there's one in particular of... My third day in Japan, I was kind of walking. I was on a walk, but just, there's a baseball field, so I was feeling homesick, feeling overwhelmed, kind of like I've way in over my head. I'm in a country that I don't understand. I'm completely mm-hmm. alone. Mm-hmm. And as I'm walking back from these baseball fields, I cross this sushi restaurant, and you have the, you know the traditional flags out front. Um, and I'm like, you know what? I really want to try sushi. So I go in. No one's there. Completely empty restaurant except for the owner. And I'm like, this is my third day in Japan. I'm like, is he going to turn me away because I'm a foreigner? I'm in the middle of like kind of nowhere Japan. Um, but I sit down and I had worked in a sushi restaurant back in the States. So I knew a lot about uh, fish and I knew their names in oh, Japanese. Yeah. So I started talking to him about fish. And then one thing led to another and I didn't leave for the next five hours. So we talked like the entire day. Um, and then I went back to th- next week, same thing. Got to meet kind of his family. And I've gone back every week since and Every time they feed me until I can't eat anymore. <laughs> um, and they introduced me to all the other guests. And I have a bunch of different conversations. And then I, every night, kind of when all the guests have left around 9 o'clock, I spend like the next two hours just talking to him and his family till last train. So, yeah, that's a weekly occurrence for me. I go back there every week. So it's been, that's probably been my favorite experience in Japan. That's so nice. Yeah. And from that moment, like, kind of all the anxiety, all the, can I do this, just faded away. Like, no, I can, I've got this. I can live in Japan. So that really was like the defining, no, I've got this. I can I can handle this because I have people here who care about me. So when you entered the restaurant first, who, who talked? You just started talking? Yeah, I just started talking to the chef because, I mean, he couldn't speak a lick of English. So, like, he probably is, he was confused. Like, why is there a foreigner here? But when I started speaking in Japanese, he got really excited of, like, oh, my goodness, you can speak Japanese. And then... One thing led to another, and 
you know, by the end of the night, we were just talking about very deep topics, history. So, I mean, it was, it was a very good experience in that regard. And how do you like the restaurants in Sanganjaya? There are so many students Ooh. like me who wants to explore with it. Yeah, no, restaurants in Sanganjaya are very good. Um, there's a lot of really good ramen here, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of kind of quaint spots, if you kind of go off the beaten track um, and, f and go into just weird little spots, you can find some nice ones. There's one right by school. Kind of if you go out and turn left, it has like these beads out front, this bead um, kind of entry. Um, and mm -hmm. they've got really like really cheap ramen, really cheap chihachudon, um, and it's a very you know quaint ramen shop. But the owner's pretty nice as well. I go there a lot. Then there's like one of my favorite restaurants as well is kind of at the end of the main Shulten guy. There's um, if you go across the street and turn left, there's this spot called Thin Ramen, which has really spicy ramen. Like if you eat it, you get your name on the wall. That's how spicy it is. But it's really good. Really good if you go there for lunch because you can get like a giant bowl of ramen, karage, and uh, either rice or an egg in your ramen. And it's really cheap. So it's those are my two like biggest recommendations, especially for ramen. But even just kind of going into random spots, there's a lot of good ones. Yeah, I'm hungry. Because <laughs> <laughs> I had my breakfast like two, three hours ago. Do you have breakfast? No, I didn't eat breakfast. I'm not, my, I'm not very big on breakfast. I like... I kind of, once I get running, I'll eat. I'll eat around noon. But until then, my body's just like, we don't want to exist right now. So we don't really need to eat. <laughs> I'm not much of a morning person. I can do it, but I'm not much of a morning person. I'm a, I'm a night owl. Well, thank you for coming in the morning. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> it was quite early. And then at noon, I don't want time because I know you're really busy and you don't get to have lunch at like 12. It, lunch is kind of whenever I can find five minutes to wolf it down. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I usually eat lunch actually here at school from the, yeah. the, the I know the lunch ladies. Um, so I usually eat it here at school. It takes about five minutes. It's good. It's cheap. So then I'll uh, either go out for dinner if I have time or, you know. Yeah, it either. always feels like brunch, lunch, dinner, everything. Yeah. 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 Sometimes I eat in class because that's the only time <laughs> I get. Yeah. Do you do that? Do you eat in class? I try not to because, like, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I would get yelled at. But um, I, I try and eat before go, going to class. But there are sometimes I really just, like, have two minutes to eat. And I just, mm. you know, turn into a speed eater. So, yeah. Uh, you can eat fast. Oh, yeah. I can eat really fast. I mean, I grew up in a family of four four siblings. So, like, you have to eat for quickly for your first so you can get seconds before everyone else. <laughs> so, like, I, I can eat really fast if I have to turn it on. Uh, especially with my older brother, he would, <laughs> he was, he would eat more than me. So like he and he like he has a really fast metabolism, so he would uh -huh. never gain anything. So like yeah. it was always a competition of you got to eat quickly, you got to outrace your brother, you got to outrace your dad, so you can get seconds before they do. <laughs> what so. was your favorite dish? Ooh, tacos. I mean, I I grew up in San Antonio, so like we would have tacos three times a week. It was, I mean, they were cheap, they were good. You know, we would all make them and all eat them. It was that's probably my favorite dish growing up. You know, I don't know what tacos is exactly. I mean, sometimes it's in a hard chip. Sometimes it's in like yeah. A there's a lot bread. of. I mean, there's like, and we would also do a lot of like fajitas. Um, so it's that's grilled meat with some vegetables and a, between a flour or corn tortilla, soft one. But then we'd also just do ground beef and in between a hard shell. So, um, yeah, we we would do a variety of different tacos, but it was all always good and always spicy. Do you like burritos? I love burritos. I love everything Mexican food. Did you like the burritos from Dean's Tea's Trusty? Have you had it yet? I, th I remember having them. They were good for Japan. That's what <laughs> I'll say. They were good for Japan. They, I mean, when you're from San Antonio, like it, it, there's, we have a really large Latino population, uh -huh. um, like 65, I think almost 70%. So like, you know a good burrito. But, uh, I mean, you know, it was free, which is good. That's a good thing. You know, the, the thing about Mexican food is it has to be good and it has to be cheap, in my mind. That's what makes it good. Uh, um, so free, that was a big plus. And, you know, edible, not spicy, <laughs> but it was good. So, like, I, I, would, I would give it a solid seven. <laughs> Are you close with the team? Yes. <laughs> you can maybe... Give him some advice on I mean, it. I yeah. would love a good burrito. He can't import them from Mexico. So, like, <laughs> shy of that, I'd say he did a really good job. 
<laughs> okay, and your activities at um, TUJ. Um, please talk about it. Sure. So, um, student for like student government. Mm, and like ICAS and everything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I especially last semester started doing a lot of things. I was an ICAS ambassador, so I went on trips to Fukushima twice, to Hiroshima and Kobe, as well as some trips around t- Tokyo. Um, we were kind of examining uh, reconstruction for Ukraine in the light of Japan's own reconstruction after z- disasters. Um, mm. So there, that was a lot of research, but it was also a lot of team meetings, a lot of conversations with my professors and my directors. Um, it was a really good experience. Also, I frequent, like, I'm almost at every single ICAST event. I try and go to every single one. We just had one last night. I think we have one coming up today, too. So there's a lot. Um, but I'm there usually because um, I, I find them, you know, stimulating and fun. Um, I try and also go to a lot of, you know, whatever TUJ activities are, are organized, either, whether it's program board or, like, by the Japanese Culture Club. Um, I try and be active because I find just activities be pretty fun. And then for student government, we also try and organize them as well. We did study nest last semester, which was really fun, just kind of being out all day, handing people free food and free energy drinks and free just to help them study. Um, that was something that we did that we're hoping to do again. Um, and just a host of other just, you know, small activities, small meetups. Um, those are really always fun to kind of meet stu- meet my fellow students and, and kind of get to know them or get to know more about different topics. When did you become a president again? I was elected in September. I really kind of assumed office in October, really, was where it started, as, at least from my memory, as I really started kind of working in October. Last year? Yeah. yeah. Really recent then. Yeah, no, it's been... You know, it feels like forever, but it's only been two and a half months. Mm. Yeah, which three and a half months. But yeah, no, it's been a very eventful three and a half months. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, before like you hosted all the events, when was Study Nest again? It was towards the end of the Yeah, it was right? during study days. So that was, I think, December 5th and 6th. So would you say that was like your very first event? As a president, um, that the body hosted. I think that was the first one that we officially. Well, we actually we also did a club summit, so we brought all the club leaders together. Oh, you did. Yeah, we did. So we brought as many of the club leaders together as we could. Kind of talked about working together, introduced them to each other. Um, that was also very fun. I want to say we did another event, but honestly, last semester was so hectic I could be forgetting it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we we tried to increased cooperation among clubs because, so, you know, they do a lot for students and we wanted to also appreciate them just yeah. know that, like, hey, you know, we got them pizza, we, you know, played some games. Um, so that was one thing we did that we also want to do again uh, is those club summits, um, club fairs as well. So, but, yeah, last semester, I would say, though, that the study nest was kind of the first taste of organizing a big event. Mm. Um, and we did it in cooperation with program board, but, you know, especially, like, right before finals, right at the end of the semester, I was having to write a, a final paper for ICAS. Um, so that was like a very juggling a lot of things, very hectic. But um, it was, you know, program board, Chisato, and the rest were really helpful. Um, and it was kind of really, it all came together, I would say, pretty well to kind of proof of concept that students really appreciated it. It was really fun to be handing stuff out. Mm-hmm. We were all like studying for finals while handing stuff out. So <laughs> one of us would be like, you know, studying, the other two would be talking and um but yeah, also like I did a lot of just kind of meetings with the Emerging Leaders Program, got to know them a lot. I helped them a lot. Or I, you know, I did the raffle for Welcome Week and they kind of incorporated some events. And it was really fun to get to know them as well. They're a really impressive cohort of students, really motivated, just really fun and open. So um, they also just volunteered to help with Study Nest as well. So it was always fun to just kind of be chatting with them or joking with them um, and just see them and, you know, kind of know that they're the next people that are going to be following me. Um, in terms of student leaders, it was really fun to kind of have that relationship. Okay, so I'm guessing we can anticipate more like engagement with the student government as a student. Yeah. But um, one question is, how can students tell apart TUJPB and the student government? Like, mm. So program board really does a fantastic job at organizing events. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that, like, most events that are organized, unless it says student government, like, you can kind of see if it's from program board in your email or on the poster or from student government. Um, 
But this program board really excels at doing events. I think student government, what we're trying to do is get to know students and be available to help students. Mm. Um, we're on the kind of the student relations. So we also do events with something we did events with Shoah last semester as well. Um, so sometimes they, our interests obviously overlap like it did with study nests, right? But I think kind of our missions are a bit different. Of program board is trying to organize events. Student government is trying to represent student voices, right? And hear those voices and help. Um, so in that same goal, we also like, you know, sometimes we come together for study nest where we want to organize an event, but also help students with studying. Um, but our kind of our missions are where they div diverge, are still connected in helping students, but and how we do that is a bit different. Mm, I see you often in your um, room. Where is it again? Somewhere in cafeteria? Yeah, so it's at the back of cafeteria, yeah. and there are those three study rooms. I'm in the middle one. Um, oh, so it's got okay. a giant owl on it, student government room. But, yeah, I'm always in there. It's... Yeah, I've, I'm trying to reorganize the office right now, but, <laughs> you know, I spend a lot of time, I was like, I'm getting a little bit tired of this layout, maybe I should reorganize it, so, yeah, but I'm, I'm there most every day, so you can, and, you know, we've got tea and coffee and ref and biscuits, if ever, anyone wants to come in for, like, office hours, or just come in and chat and have some of those, we're always kind of, if someone's in there, you can always go in, so, it's an open door policy. And do you happen to like fashion as well, because I noticed your tie? Yeah. I I like fashion in the sense of I have clothes that I really like wearing. I mm -hmm. don't really follow like fashion like Coachella or anything it, like that. Yeah. But I just like I really take pride in wearing stuff that makes me feel good. And other people seem to appreciate it. So yeah, I, I definitely have like I pick what I wear very carefully because I just think it looks cool or I want to pull off this look or style. Um, but I don't follow fashion. I just more like I have my own personal fashion that I like to to. Yeah, you have a style that's like soaring. <laughs> it's very like, um, it really catches the character. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, that's soaring. Yeah, I try yeah. and kind of have like a personal style. It's, you know, more classic, more, you know, looks semi-formal, but also just, you know, I, I just really enjoy that look. Um, kind of, an, it looks a bit antique maybe. Um, mm -hmm. But I really, I, I go for certain looks. And then I'll, I'll switch it up with some more modern clothing. But yeah, I really do like... Kind of, and ever since I was like 12, I always liked wearing suits or, you know, flat caps or Irish caps. So, like, this is something that I've always kind of enjoyed. Um, and, you know, my friends and siblings would even make fun of, poke fun at me about it sometimes. But really, it's just kind of, especially coming to Japan, people seem to appreciate that a lot more. So I've just found, like, an area where it's like, yes, I can wear it and feel good about it. And everyone thinks it looks awesome. Like, this is awesome. This is perfect. So I've really enjoyed that and also being in Japan because it fits with Japan pretty well, I'd say. Uh, it does. It yeah. does. And like you said, more than style, but the only more than style I've saw, seen from you is like top to bottom temple <laughs> merchandise. Yeah, that's like, that's another yeah. one. Is when I when I just want to throw on a hoodie, just well, I'm wearing a temple, so yeah. like I'm you know I missed her temple. I look I, I I look the part. No one's gonna get mad at me. <laughs> um, but that's kind of my my casual outfit. Um, but I still feel I mean I still feel really good in that one too because I like wrapping the school so. Yeah, and it was very, very baseball-y, too. Yeah. Like the way you styled it, I yeah. sensed a baseball. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, and I had the baseball cap. I actually got that cap um, at main campus when I went to visit my oh, sisters. Oh, no wonder. Yeah. Because so. you don't find that here, No, right? yeah, no. Yeah, and then actually it's funny, too, because when I, I... I'm in the volleyball club here. Uh -huh. um, not because I'm good at volleyball, because they're all really nice and they speak Japanese. I'm... I've gotten to be not a liability at volleyball, but I'm not good. <laughs> but everyone's super nice, so I go. Um, but, you know, I have a, a jersey from them, but then I got, like, shorts from main campus and socks. So when I go, I have, like, the full temple gear. I look like I'm, like, a sponsored athlete of TUJ, even though we don't have funding for that. Yeah, and um, you're really tall, but, too. Yeah, so. yeah. but I, I, enjoy, I actually, you know, this is my first school I've been to, so I personally have, like, this – deep like school pride like I want to rep my school because I didn't get to do that in like high school or anything so for me I really I enjoy wearing it, the merch and you know wearing the tie right I just I that's fun to me because this is my first kind of school and community that I get to belong in and you were homeschooled but you're so good at talking and like interacting with yeah. people how yeah. so I mean that so kind of a common trope you encounter with homeschoolers is you're homeschooled. How do you socialize? Which yeah, is yeah, yeah. partially deserved, right? Because you're not <laughs> you're not socialized in a in a kind of public sense. But also, like I still had siblings. I still did orchestra. I still did baseball. But you know, I was in a much more tight knit 
like my family was my school, right? Mm-hmm. My classmates mm-hmm. were my siblings. And, you know, I'd go to school in pajamas every day, right? <laughs> but <laughs> school started when my mom said it started and it ended when I finished all my work, which was before my dad got home. But it was very flexible. You know, we could go to like a f- amusement park on a Tuesday at two o'clock because there would be no one else there, but we were homeschooled. So our hours were flexible. Um, so that homeschool background was really just kind of a, an education where it was learning because it was fun. Like I just really, like it got to the point, I love learning about history so much. My parents said, okay, we can't buy you any more history books. If you want them, you have to buy them yourself. <laughs> um, but yeah, for like- me, learning was just really fun to do. I got to kind of study the subjects that mm-hmm. I wanted handle my time the way I wanted to, kind of similar to college, where it's like you get to pick your classes to a certain degree, handle your time. So in that sense, like homeschooling was a mini college throughout high school. Um, And sometimes you could just not do your homework for a little bit or just, you know, go spend time on a Thursday, skip class, so to speak, and do it later. Um, So that was kind of in high school. And, you know, I, I, I was still kind of I guess, under-socialized in the sense of I didn't know Mm -hmm. how to talk about certain relevant topics. Mm -hmm. Um, And then kind of coming to TUJ has kind of made me more aware of a bigger community, but I really feel like I've actually kind of fit in here. Mm -hmm. So a big reason I wanted to come to Japan was, as a homeschooler, I never really felt like I fit in America. I was always different or liminal. (laughs) So kind of being an outsider all the time, it's like, well, if I'm going to be an outsider, maybe I should go to the country where everyone's an outsider who's not Japanese, right? So kind of in being an outsider, I'll fit in. Uh. Um, And I would say that's really the case at TUJ. Like everyone's kind of different. No one gets here by conventional means. We all have very different students. Everyone's a little bit kind of uncomfortable because if you're Japanese, you're studying in English. If you're American or if you're a foreigner, you're studying in a country that doesn't really kind of accept foreign or like you don't fit in at all. You stand out maybe for the first time in your life. So, like, everyone's pretty open to making friends or just accepting people for who they are or just kind of getting to know them. Everyone's kind of quirky or has different sides to them. But also everyone kind of does enjoy learning or or wants to be here for a reason because they chose to come here, right? So, like, that environment for me has been, like, I mean, I wouldn't pick any other school in the world than TUJ. Like, this has been a phenomenal experience. I've enjoyed every second of being here. I've enjoyed my classes. I've enjoyed my teachers. I've really enjoyed my fellow students. And, like, just kind of – it's the first place where I've really felt accepted for who I am um, and felt like I'm part of a community that cares about me and that I can – that's kind of why I want to give back is because I've gotten so much from the school that I never expected I would get that I didn't even think was possible. That's kind of, like – it's been better than my homeschooling experience, which I didn't think was possible. Like that was a great educational experience. And then this has just been kind of really complimentary to that, having friends, having social, being able to socialize, but you know, there's not really a norm in Japan. Like you can kind of talk about things, but you know, it's a lot more individual um, Mm. in TUJ, but it's still a community. So that's been like a huge experience for me, a huge kind of, Honestly, I was I was writing about it for a scholarship application this week and I just started crying because I was so happy Mm. about like, I'm really just, blessed to be at this school and to be in this community so that's kind of the driving force behind kind of being student government or everything I want to do is because like really this community has given me more than I could have ever asked for and I want to begin to give back to that (laughs) you love me speechless (laughs) but I felt it in heart like what you said and it's true like um it's really easy to be myself here, especially with the professors, which I didn't think would be possible. And yeah, um, I feel emotional about it too now. Yeah. And I think it's really kind of like a, a beautiful thing of, especially mm-hmm. in our current world, there's a large tendency to kind of have our differences divide us mm-hmm. and have those differences kind of be said they're, they're wrong or you, you don't fit in. So, you know, you're, you're weird, right? I was called like, you know, weird a lot or you're just you're too, you're too different, right? But at TUJ, that, that difference really is celebrated. And a lot of schools say, like, we embrace diversity, but TUJ has no other option, right? Like, we are just naturally diverse and naturally have to embrace it and naturally just have to acknowledge the person sitting to the right of me and the left of me, they're just different. So embrace that. Get to know it. Enjoy it. Um, and really, it, it's, it's taken, it takes kind of judgment or privilege, kind of, you have to take it down a notch because you need friends because you're in a <laughs> difficult situation. Yeah, yeah. So I really think that that diversity, that inclusion has, it's just, it comes naturally to TUJ. And then, you know, with other kind of things that OSSE does or that 
program board does or that we do, it feeds into that, but it's just naturally occurring, and I'm really glad to be a part of it and to see it. Yeah, I think it's also the most supportive place I've ever been. Yeah, no, I mean, and even your teachers, like, you know, there's your teachers get to know you. You can always kind of approach them. They're not very high-minded and academic. They're, they're, they're approachable. They're people, and yeah. it, that's kind of a, like everyone here is a person, and you can be friends with everyone here. And it's a small community, so if you're, you're, you'll get known if you do the right things, and you'll get known if you do the wrong <laughs> things. But it, it, I really personally feel like I thrive in that. Of like, yeah, it, it's small where everyone knows everyone. And some people, that's that's scary. They don't want to be known. But you know, that's it's a good opportunity to, to also kind of make a name for yourself. I think. Yeah, I think we have a really good president <laughs> with us, and yeah, I I'm very very happy to talk to you. And I hope that more students get to know you. And thank you so much for being here yeah, today. Yeah. Uh, it's a, we have a fun segment, and it's called What's Your Favorite? Okay. Okay, and you're, you're good at answering yeah. questions. Yeah, no, it's like answer. rapid fire, like I have 30 seconds, yeah, or yeah, you know, yeah. it's like Jeopardy. Like, like five what seconds. is? <laughs> <laughs> Show it on the board. Okay. <laughs> okay, we got a few for you. Who's your favorite professor? Ooh, that so that's a really hard question. It is. There's, <laughs> there's a lot of really good professors. Yeah. So, one of I mean, can I give like an, one of them is definitely like I really liked Sean Arnold's class when I first came in. He really mm-hmm. pushed me to be a good writer. I'm gonna just do a, a couple because I I can't really pick. Um, Michael Chuchik's class, he's really funny. Every time I went to his class, it was just like a comedy hour. <laughs> like it was so much fun. I I was sad when every class ended for that. And then another one is just Kyle Cleveland, who's also kind of the co-director of ICAST. But he's really quirky, but really good professor, really nice, really engaged with students, really cares about his students, um, and incredibly knowledgeable. He's been at TUJ for over 30 years. Like he, really? Yeah, he knows TUJ. He used to be like the director of student activities. Like he, he knows all this random stuff. He's shown me around these random parts of Tokyo. And, you know, he is just super cool. So those are my kind of three off the top of my head, I can go on and on and on, but those are like, you know, three professors that I really respect. I respect a lot. There's, I've gotten to know so many professors here, it's really hard to pick one, but, mm-hmm. you know, if you're in kind of those fields, I would definitely say those professors are fantastic. Yeah, there are some professors who does things that makes me be like, oh, this will be viral on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have to move on to the next question. Um, what's your favorite, oh no, it's okay. What's your favorite uh, nap spot at TJ? Hmm. I actually really like napping on the sixth floor kind of terrace out there, outside. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I'll just put a blanket down and just sleep there, kind of go in a corner. I really like being outside, like so you can see the sky. That's where I tend to nap, and it's not too busy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, some people like to nap in Parliament. I have I have taken a fat nap on a beanbag once in a while. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I would say that for me, the kind of the quiet, peaceful place is out on the on the sixth floor little uh, terrace. And what is your favorite study spot in TUG? My favorite study spot is either like the, I would usually use the hyperfix classroom on the sixth floor. I think it's room 608. Uh Um, If no one is in there, I study in my office now a lot. Um, But also, you know, we have these new new pods in the library. Those are really cool to study in if you reserve them. Um, They're just little, you know, you feel very comfortable, very cozy. Those are really cool spots as well. That's kind of where I'm kind of, I want to study in there or study in the library more. So, Did you get to study in the study pot mm-hmm. yet? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're open now. So I got to study in them this oh. weekend. And when they first came in, I, I tried them out. They're they're really nice. They're really cool. Do you have to reserve them? You don't have to, but there are only six of them. So, like, you might have to get it. If you want to get access to it, um, you should probably reserve it in advance. But sometimes they're just open, so you can do that too. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, what's your favorite gen ed? Ooh, my favorite gen ed that I've taken so far has been Creative Acts with Morgan Schultz. Love him. <laughs> yeah, he's super fun, super New York, but like he's a great professor. He'll just tell you like you need to do this, not in a mean way, but in a really nice way. Yeah. Um, so I really liked that class. It was kind of one of those areas where I realized, huh, my writing is kind of lousy, but every once in a while I can write like one sentence that actually – kind of thing there is good it's like okay so now i understand like the difficulty of what creative writing is but at least i understand that and i got to read a lot of cool stuff so that was a really fun experience it was really like kind of 
easy class if you did what he asked you to do. Like, he, it was very straightforward. It wasn't like, you know, you're going to be graded on, on – he, he, he says, like, I don't grade someone on their creativity. Whatever you create is great, but you have to create and you have got to read. So that was a really fun class, especially my first semester. That was actually the most difficult thing for me to get used to because, like, everything's, like, perfect for him. Right. Or, like, he doesn't grade the way you usually get graded. Right, right yeah. So we were all lost, like – how do you get an A in this class? <laughs> no, I mean, like, <laughs> any submission you turn in, it's, it's, yeah. like, as long as you turn it in and as long as you try it, it's like, yeah, no, you, you mean, I can't grade a creative act, it's creative, so. Yeah, yeah, also, yeah. it was really fun because I took that when I first came to Tokyo, so I would go on these assignments of going around Tokyo or walking the rain and trying to write, like, it was really fun to just kind of have what I was feeling and put it into words or things around me, and it was all super new. It was, it was a really good time, at, like, to take it in your first semester, I thought. Yeah, and all of his classes for me, personally, was revelational. And at one point, like, he, he would be like, do you have any questions? And I would just be like, I don't have any, but can you just keep talking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, great professor. One of the best I've had. And, yeah, that's about it for the favorites. And the last question, which is the question of the day, is what is your song of the day? Okay, so the song of the day that I listened to coming over here, and I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, is I believe it's Jean no Gretarien. It's, it's a French song. It's very popular. Um, you can, you'll recognize it if you hear it, but I probably butchered that very bad because I don't speak French. Um, <laughs> I want to in the future, but I don't speak French. It but, sounded good on yeah. the heads. Oh, okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah, but then I mean, there's other there's songs I've been like absolutely binging this week of like something in the way by Nirvana, and um, then another French song Le Fou. Um, those are kind of my my binging this week. So okay, well everyone hit him up if you think you have the same interest, and thank you so much for being with us, Mr. President. Yeah, it was great to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, that was a pretty awesome episode. Mm, I really enjoyed talking to him. Yeah, I think he's a very interesting person. And we learned a new word today. Do you remember it? Loquacious. Loquacious. <laughs> I didn't even know what that was before this. That's so cool. Well, um, thank you so much for watching this episode, everyone. If you mm. want to check out more episodes, be sure to subscribe to TUJ's channel. Make sure to follow us on Instagram. We have an Instagram now. Yay. And uh, what else? Anything else, Sheena? No, just watch the episode again. <laughs> I don't, I don't think it. they should watch this episode again. Maybe the next one. But yes, <laughs> thank you for watching, guys. Bye. <laughs>